It's better than any sporting event I've ever been to. Yeah. Here in Savannah, we've got the number one place to come to and watch baseball. And you don't even need to like baseball, you can have a blast here. Daisy is now the official bat dog for the Savannah Bananas. I didn't expect anything like this. And I don't think Savannah expected anything like this. It was just an amazing thing to see, just the success story go from, you know, a little egg to, to you know, a full-fledged sort of phenomenon. I started trying to learn everything I could about the baseball business, but more about the entertainment business. It's, a, it's, it's not even a baseball game, it's a circus. It's a circus! I don't even know how they did it. I seriously have no idea how you pack your ace the because I have no idea how they really, really did it. It started when I proposed to my wife at our final game of the 2014 season with our former team in Gastonia, North Carolina, and in front of 4,000 fans. She said yes, we put off a fireworks show, of course we delayed the game and had just complete shenanigans going on for 30 minutes. The umpires were asking, when is this game going to start? And the next day, she's like, wow, you did this epic proposal in front of a sold out crowd. I want to plan something for you. So we took a trip to Savannah. It was the first time he'd ever been. So we came to Grayson Stadium and it was a gorgeous night. It was 80 degrees or something. It was perfect and there was nobody here. And we both just kind of were sad for an old ballpark like this to sit basically empty on a beautiful summer Saturday night. So I remember that night I called the commissioner of our league and I said, if this team ever leaves, we're coming to Savannah. He said, okay, Jesse, whatever you say. And we found, lo and behold, a few months later, they wanted a brand new stadium. The New York Mets organization, in the opinion of most Savannians, wanted way too much. They wanted a new ballpark. We're all about our history here, and Grayson Stadium is a gem. It should be called a great, it should be called Grayson Ballpark, because this is not a stadium, this is a ballpark. I, I was a, a huge proponent of the city reinvesting in Grayson Stadium and not, not building the new stadium, especially for a minor league team downtown. You know, some markets can make it work, but Savannah is a small market, and Savannah is a very unique market in that we have this rich history here. Went to the city and said, we want to do this. And so they came, saw a game in Gastonia, saw the craziness, and said, we'll give you a shot. Everything was so entertaining, so fan-focused, so family-focused, um, and watching the baseball game, it was pretty good baseball. I mean, I think it was as good as some of the single-A teams we had here. I mean, um, it, was, it was entertaining, and if you wanted to come see some baseball, you saw some, some good baseball. And I thought, man, this is unbelievable. I, I think this is some, something I'd like to give it a shot. We were able to, to work out a deal and, and give it a chance, and, and I think the reaction to the baseball quote-unquote community in Savannah was that I'd made a huge mistake and didn't know what I was doing, and Savannah needed baseball, and they didn't want some second-class baseball, and we deserved better. There wasn't the history there. There's no track record to show that this, the Savannah team, whatever it's called, is going to have any kind of following and there are a lot of doubters out there. So October 5th, we show up, we're pumped. It's my wife and I, it's our 24-year-old president, Jared Orden, and three 22-year-olds right out of college. And we show up all excited and we walk in and everything was taken out of the stadium. Everything, all the furniture, the equipment. There was no internet, there were no phone lines. I can't paint a more bleak picture of what this office looked like. There, there weren't even offices, we actually, used a storage space as our first office. Yeah, I'll, I'll never forget that. My first day walking in the stadium and there was three guys here from the city of Savannah and they had this big wad of keys in their hand and they were like, here you go, have fun. And then they all left and it was like, what are we doing? Like, what just happened? Like, it's, it's real now, it's real. There were tiles missing from the floor. There were stains in the ceiling tiles. Um, the carpet was this like gross, like green picked, stuff in some of the offices. Um, there was no equipment, no phone lines, no office. Like it was just, we had this empty stadium and we had nothing to do with it. And so literally we started working just, you know, in a storage room basically. And every day going in there, trying to get in touch with people, trying to make phone calls, just trying to share who we were with people. And, and, and people were so skeptical. And there was one picnic table that we brought in and we started working there. Just trying to make calls into the community. It was an ugly scene. We were trying to do the best we could. And we all had this great vision of what we wanted to accomplish, but it wasn't that great vision that we were working with that first day. 
And that was one of the biggest challenges for us in the beginning was nobody knew who we were. Nobody knew what we were doing here. Nobody knew what this thing was about. We were just the next people in line to fail. And that was a challenge. I mean, that was kind of a prideful thing for us. We're like, you know, we can do this, but people were very skeptical of us. So that was, you know, one of the biggest challenges for us in those first, you know, from, from day one up until we announced the name. We came out to the city and we were like, we're gonna do a big launch event. So in November, we planned this big launch event at the conference center and the epic conference center across the water and we invited everyone we knew and about 100 people showed up. It was pretty unfortunate as we announced and people were like, who are these guys? That first announcement, that first night was fun. We were excited, but we were definitely winning people over all night. We sold one season ticket in the first two months that we were there. And uh, that was the starting point where we said, was this the right decision? And as we went through October, November, December, it got harder for us. We weren't selling any tickets. We weren't selling any sponsorship. People were like, who is this college summer team coming in here? And it got so bad that the middle of January, I got a phone call on Friday afternoon at 445 from one of our employees saying that we completely overdrafted our account. And my wife and I were at my best friend's wedding up in New Jersey and we realized that, wow, what are we gonna do? We have no money left. So at that point, my wife and I, we, did, we decided we were gonna sell our house, empty out our savings account, we're gonna come down here, get an air bed, and go all in. And that's what we did. And as soon as we named the team that February 25th, 2016, everything changed. So they had, they had this contest, you know, fans get to pick, you know, and of course, fans, they hadn't played a game yet. And you started seeing some of the, you know, the, the, the sailors or the captains. The Savannah Pickles, the Ghosts, the to-go cups. We came up at the station, we liked the Savannah Spectres, okay? We thought Savannah being a ghost town, Savannah Spectres would be perfect for it. And then they come out with bananas. We're like, dang, man. Let's tell you the team name. He's gonna, gonna show bust us. it out. All right, do do do. That's right. <laughs> I we have a new name chest, for the everybody. baseball team in Savannah, and it is Savannah Bananas. Bananas. That's right. They'll be taking the field at Grayson Stadium later this spring. And we knew we had to be dramatically different, dramatically crazier, totally outside the box when we did this thing. And really Savannah Bananas was the only thing that fit that mold. I mean, we had one person suggest it. You know, why the heck not? We can't be anything boring. We can't be anything, you know, that's ever been done before. Savannah Bananas is the only thing that fits this bill. And when we announced that on February 25th, it was like, holy crap, the world just freaked out. And that day on my Facebook feed, I'm going through my Facebook feed, Every single post was by people going, they called it what? The Savannah Bananas, that's a terrible name. You had the cheers, you had some jeers. Bananas, the Savannah Bananas. And then you started watching, you know, that's the great thing. Social media now, we had a chance to see kind of the spectacle that would unfold there. And you had, you know, the, the naysayers. Ah, oh, Savannah, you're gonna be a laughing stock. You're gonna embarrass our, our city. What, what do you think of Savannah Bananas? We were getting crucified. Like the owner should be thrown out of town. You guys are an embarrassment of the city. Whoever came up with the name should be fired. I mean, we were crucified. However, we got attention. People were talking about us. And so those first few weeks afterwards, the publicity nationally was huge. Locally, they were ripping us apart, but everyone was talking about us. These guys, these crazy guys, managed to get all of this city talking about them all day long. These guys are geniuses. They've, they've cracked the code. They figured out how to get attention and publicity and get everybody talking about them all at once. And they've really never stopped since. Within 30 minutes, we were trending number one on Twitter. ESPN was reaching out. It went viral. And all of a sudden, we started pressing refresh on our email and we were selling merchandise every couple seconds all over the world. I mean, let's be honest, Savannah is quirky. Why not the Savannah Bananas? It rhymes and then the logo comes out and you're like, oh, this is brilliant. I mean, then you're like, okay, now you have a vision. Then the mascot comes out. Oh, we're gonna have a, you know, we're gonna have a mascot too. And it's a banana. Please welcome the world's strongest banana, the king of potassium. Please welcome Split! Yeah!
The name Split has seemed to resonate with team leaders. This after considering more than 1,200 fan suggestions for a name. The fan who submitted it, Jennifer Terry, won tickets to five games this season. It was just great, and then the marketing started, and the exposure started. For us, you know, it was instant. You're giving viewers an opportunity to see something something creative, something new, uh, something that, that not anybody else in the country is getting a chance to experience. And we've been waiting for the day. The Savannah Bananas are finally taken to Grayson Stadium for their home opener. For the first game, Emily and I showed up at 5 in the morning. And as we came to the stadium, there were news reporters outside shooting live of the Bananas' first game. And right now I'm joined by President Jared Orton. Thanks for having us out. And the bad dog, Daisy. We can't forget about her. It's her big night, too, tonight. Yeah, it's great. Opening night. Here we are, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, I guess it is now. Uh, we're so excited. Ready to open this uh, place up tonight and I welcome all the fans for opening night. Yeah, and it is a sellout, so no more tickets available for tonight. How are the guys feeling? How are the players feeling for tonight? You know, I texted our coach last night. They won the game last night. I said, get ready to come to a sold-out crowd. So they're fired up. We were so excited. The game was sold out, our first game in history, and it was an absolute roller coaster of a day. We were ready to open the gates at 5.30. There were hundreds of people waiting to get into the stadium, and it just started pouring. Absolutely huge downpour. People started rushing into the stadium. We weren't even open. We didn't know what to do with them. And we were feeding 4,000 people all you can eat, which we've never done before. There were so many disasters that opening night, but I remember vividly walking out onto the field. The game you know, should have started at seven o'clock. And I looked up and not one fan had left the stadium. 4,000 people waiting for that first pitch at 8.30. And we played absolutely terrible. I mean, we just played horrible, but fans stayed throughout the night. And we knew we were onto something special because the fans wanted to be a part of it all night. You know, I think opening day is always memorable because of the challenges and the events that take place, but it's no different than every other game the rest of the season. I mean, the cheers, the fans, the excitement, the enthusiasm, it doesn't wane. You know, I think in sports, a lot of times so much emphasis is put into opening day. And what do you see the next night? Nobody shows up. It's like opening day happened and that's the, that's the end of the season for us. I mean, we always say it, it's always someone's first game. You know, it's not just opening night you have to put on the greatest show. Every single night is someone's first game. It's opening night for somebody coming out every single night. It's the hottest ticket in Savannah this summer. Ten home games at historic Grayson Stadium since the start of the season earlier this month. Nine of those contests have been sellouts. Uh, we never knew it would be this big. The community support has been unbelievable. Selling out almost every game, 4,000 fans plus. Now listen to this. Every single game the Bananas have played at home this summer, well, it's been a sellout. You know, covering minor league baseball felt like work. When I come to a Savannah Bananas game to cover and get highlights and do stories, I'm a fan. And that's one of the things that, that I, I love being able to do. Jesse and the Bananas do such a great job in transporting you. Yeah, you may be five miles from home or, or two miles from your office, but when you step foot in a historic Grayson Stadium, it's like you're at Disney World. There's something to be said about the community coming together for one thing and the community be able to go to one place. This is that place. There were so many excuses about why baseball wouldn't work in Savannah. It's too hot. There's too many little league games going on. Parents aren't going to come out here all night. They have blown all that away. Just goodbye. 3-1 count. Ball gets in. And he dives. And he's got it. He's got it. And the Bananas are CPL champions. After splitting the first two games of the best of three series, the Bananas Wasted no time jumping out to an early lead in game three. Savannah scored six runs in the first two innings and withstood a couple rallies from the Pilots to claim the title. Wednesday morning, the team arrived back in Savannah with championship trophy in tow. Well, I, you know, you're, you're tempted to say that's just a Cinderella thing. It's just a fluke or whatever, but it all built. It built on each other. And something Jesse said, I was interviewing him not too long ago, and he said something that I, I thought was, it's kind of a no-brainer when he says it, but I hadn't thought of it before. He's like, the players 
play better when the fans are having a better time. And I didn't stop and think about that because that, that certainly wasn't the paradigm with the minor league teams because most of those players, they didn't really care if any, I mean, frankly, let's be honest, they didn't really care if anybody showed up. They were all auditioning for another job. But it's different with these college players. And then you realize, I get it. This this is this is going to be something special for Savannah because it's it's a circus with baseball taking center stage is what it becomes. I mean that that's in the middle ring right there is a baseball game and surrounded all around it. All that stuff, all the sideshow stuff is what really makes uh, the circus itself so special. If the baseball was slow, long and boring to many and even myself, how would we make it exciting? So we started thinking about how do you create this non-stop show of entertainment? So when I started in Gastonia, it was like, what could we do that's different? At a typical baseball game, they play the game, you may have a few promotions. How can we do things that are a little crazy? So the first idea is the players normally play. Could they actually dance? We had that mindset of, we want people to come to the ballpark and say, you won't believe what I saw at the stadium tonight, and to expect the unexpected. And that's where the greatest ideas came from. He's become a summer baseball treasure. Darius Johnson is a first base coach for the Savannah Bananas with serious moves. The idea of a break dancing coach has been a dream of mine for many, many years. It, we woke up the next morning and all of a sudden I'm on TV and Jesse's freaking out. I'm freaking out. Everybody is freaking out. So most teams have these young dance teams that can do all these backflips and we said, no, let's go the opposite. Let's get these unbelievable senior citizens who can do some great hip hop dances. And then the concept of banana nanas, it just worked. But the age group is over 65 and into the mid 70s. There's no baseball teams out there that have pep bands. But I was watching these football games with these 100-piece pep bands getting the crowd going and people dancing with them, having fun. I was like, why doesn't baseball have that? Does baseball need more pep bands? Yes, they do. <laughs> it's a blast. I don't know why they haven't thought of it before. And the, the marketing, I think the social media is the thing that I've noticed the most. Uh, you don't have to be at the stadium, you don't have to be in Savannah, you could be anywhere and kind of keep tabs on the bananas. If you're taking a class on marketing, this is probably a textbook where they tore up the textbook and they wrote a new textbook. I'm in the media, but what the bananas have done on the social media component is crazy. It's gotten out to the world. And that's why you have people on every continent wearing Savannah Bananas gear. I mean, you got bananas across the globe, and that is so cool. And that's the great thing. It's not just about baseball, and it's not just about one or two uh, silly games. It all rotates, and it all builds on each other. And these guys are always having, you know, idea sessions where they come up with new and better and crazier ideas all the time. And I think that's part of the fun that they're having, and that, that infectious sense of fun it gets to everybody else and makes everybody else want to be a part of it. I'd have to think, I, don't, I can't think of anything that hasn't worked for these guys here. Uh, it's just been phenomenal. And uh, it was one of the most enjoyable um, things that I did during, during my, my career. And if I look back and say, okay, name, name your top 10, you know, this one would be right there in the top five and maybe number one because it has affected so many people. Savannah has a great baseball history, except when you look at the attendance. And for some magical reason, maybe it's not magic, it's, it's a, a knowledge and expertise and creativity and timing. Timing is big, but they've made it happen and they've made Savannah go bananas for the team. You know, we're looking back to those, those stories, those fans' first moments. How can we create even more special moments for our fans? How can we wow them? As soon as they pull up to the stadium to when they leave, what can we provide that's going to make them go home and say, this was the best experience of my life? Every day I'm constantly asking, how can we provide the best fan experience in the world? How can we be the best fan-centric company in the world? And so we're never going to stop asking those questions. So what am I looking for next year? More stories.